Uh, let's go to 3 John. I want to go right there. This morning, I want to talk about prosperity. Amen. Shout that, prosperity. prosperity. Amen. Do you know that God wants you to be blessed? Amen. Uh, this, this mindset, and I, you know, this was prevalent uh, for many years, that you had to be broke, poor, and humble to be godly. That is demonic. And it is not of God. Now, I'm not saying if you, if you are poor that you're not saved. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there's good news for you today. Uh, Jesus said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What's good news to a poor man? You ain't got to be poor no more. Amen? <laughs> Shout yes. yes. Third John. We're going to look at one verse. You know it. But I want you to, you know, a lot of times you can, you can hear something. Well, let me put it this way. You heard something, but you didn't hear it. Amen? You heard it, but you didn't hear it. To hear it is to allow it to become alive in your spirit, man. Amen? Third John. We're going to get through this. Verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Amen. Body, soul, and spirit. I want to read it again. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest shout it, prosper, and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. 1 Samuel 2, verse 7 and verse 8 says this. The Lord makes the poor, and he makes the rich. He bringeth low, and he lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust, and he lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. Shout yes. yes. Do you know that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants? Yes. Psalm 35 verse 27 says that, that he takes pleasure, great pleasure, in the prosperity of his servants. Psalm 30, verse 6. I believe he has that one up there. Psalm 30, verse 6 says this. And in my prosperity, shout it again, prosperity. The psalmist said, I shall never be moved. Prosperity means security. You're secure in the fact that your sins are forgiven. Because he says if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Shout all unrighteousness. You're secure in that. Amen. 1 Peter 1, 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last day. You're secure in your salvation. You're prospering in your salvation, knowing that it's not by your works, your efforts or your ability or your inability, but it's solely by the grace of God. For by grace, you are saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast or brag about it. Amen? You can't brag about salvation, but you're secure in that he has forgiven you and he's prospering you. Amen? In your salvation. Who's going to heaven? Shout yes. yes. All right. Prosperity means security. You can be sure. Uh, Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessing of the Lord makes rich body, soul, and spirit. He adds no sorrow to it. Say that with me. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about your soulish man. I'm talking about your spirit man. I'm talking about your physical body. Amen. The Bible says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy but God comes that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Who wants an abundant life? I do. Amen? I want the goodness of God. I want the blessings of God in my life. Amen. You don't have to struggle all the... You're going to have trials. Don't get me wrong. You're going to have tribulation. But you don't have to live in a constant state of struggle financially, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You don't have to. But the choice is yours. And it's all by what? It's all by your faith. Psalm 112. I want to go there. Psalm 112 is my life chapter. I used to read it every day, and I think I'm going to start again. Amen. 
I memorized it. I, I spoke it over my life. And I want to share it with you today. Psalm 112, verse 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed, shall I'm blessed, blessed, is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Prosperity starts at the cross. Prosperity starts at the cross. It starts with you coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. When he convicted your heart and you gave him your life and Christ became your master, savior, and Lord, at that moment, you began to prosper and be secure in who you are in Christ. And he says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. The, the uh, Proverbs, Solomon said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We talked about wisdom in Sunday school this morning. Now, there's a lot of people that they have a lot of knowledge. They've got so many letters beside their name, it looks like alphabet soup. But they have no wisdom. They're still living with mom and dad. They've got degrees. They've got the education. But they don't have enough wisdom to put uh, sand in a mouse hole, right? Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge. Amen. Wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge that you have. And, and God can grant us wisdom if we ask for it. He gives it liberally. Amen. And he wants you wise in the fact that you are secure in prosperity. Salvation, your soulish man, your mind, your intellect, your emotions, and your physical body. And financially. You can be secure there. Amen. Who wants to do better financially? Raise your hand. That's half of you. The rest of you must be doing pretty good or you just don't care. Amen. Praise God. But I would say everybody wants to do a little better financially. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But I want to set a basis here. Prosperity starts at the cross. You must first know that Christ is Lord of your life. Amen. That's where it starts. It's a simple plan of salvation. He says if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. You believe that? Simple plan of salvation. And that's where it all begins. That's the greatest miracle of them all, is you becoming a born-again believer in Christ. Amen. That's where it all begins. Amen. Aren't you glad? Do you remember that day that you finally gave your heart to Jesus and old things passed away and everything else become new? You just wasn't the same person anymore. Amen. Because God recreated you. He regenerated you. Amen. Praise God. Raise your hands and praise Him for it. Don't take that for granted. Amen. He didn't have to save you. You wasn't looking for him. Amen. But he came after you. Amen. Praise God. And prosperity began in your life at that moment. Praise God. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Verse number two. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth, and the generation of the upright shall be blessed. I speak this over my children. I say, you are going to be mighty upon the earth. When I pray over them, I say, you shall be trumpets for the Lord Jesus Christ, declaring his gospel. They look at me like I've got four heads. I don't care. I'm speaking the word of life over them. They don't get it now, but one day they're going to say, thank you so much for speaking the word of life over me. Amen. Your, this is your seed, your children. Amen. Your offspring shall be mighty upon the earth, and the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Amen. You see, he not only wants you blessed, but he wants your family, your children. He wants them to be blessed. Amen. Praise God. I love this. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Now, we're going to talk about seed. Seed time and harvest, right? Since creation, the Lord created that. You plant a seed, you get a harvest, right? The New Testament says, if you, every one of you are here because of a seed. Right? Mom and dad got together, did whatever, here you are, right? When you're born again, you are the seed of God's word. 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. By the word of God, which lives and abides forever. That's the incorruptible seed of his word, right? Everything you do is a seed. Every word you say, every action uh, that takes place in your life that you permit and allow is a seed. 
You're either sowing to the flesh or you're sowing to the spirit man. And me and Brother Joe Bennett was talking about it the other night. He's a farmer. And he says, you know, sometimes you have to prepare the soil before you sow the seed, right? But he also said this, you will reap a harvest whether you're sowing to the flesh or to the spirit. And you'll always reap more than you sowed. Some of you today, you're reaping a lascivious lifestyle you once lived today. But all that can change. All that can change. You can begin to sow to the spirit man. Amen. Because he says, if you sow to the flesh, you shall reap of, you shall reap of the flesh corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you reap life abundantly and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. All right. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3. Wealth and riches. Uh-oh. Somebody come up to me and says, are you one of those faith prosperity preachers? I said, well, I'm not a doubt and poverty preacher. <laughs> Is that what you want me to be? Yeah. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. I got in my Bible, wealth and riches shall be in my house. <laughs> and you ought to put it in your Bible too. Is it not what the word of God says? Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Let me tell you something, folks. Uh, prosperity starts at the cross. It starts from the inner man, the spirit man, all right? Your soulish, then it goes to your soulish man, then your physical man. Amen? I want to look like in the physical what I look like in the spirit. Amen? I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the spirit. I believe that. <laughs> I want that to play out in my physical man. Praise God. Amen. Just let that thing play out. And your soulish man, your mind, your will, that's where the knowledge comes from. You have to understand what the Bible says about prosperity financially. We're going to talk about that for a moment. We talked about the spirit man, the soulish man, prospering in your salvation, prospering. Uh, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen. So when you have the peace of God abiding on the inside of you, that's going to play out in your physical man. Just like if you're, if you're worried or if you have envy or unforgiveness or bitterness or jealousy, all that's going to play out in your physical man. Amen. It's going to breed cancers and sickness and disease, high blood pressure, all of that. It will play out from the inside out. So I tell people, if you want to be healed, get healed on the inside first and let it play out in your physical man. Amen. Amen. Forgive somebody. Amen. Uh, uh, quit being jealous. Quit being envious. Repent of all that. Forget about it. Become selfless and allow Christ to abide on the inside of you. Amen. And it'll play out in your physical man because he wants you blessed physically as well. God gets no glory out of you being sick. Let me say it again. He gets no glory out of you being sick. I, it, it blows my mind. People come up to me for prayer, for healing, and if it doesn't happen right then, it must not be God's will. I said, well, don't go to the doctor. Don't take any medicine because if it's God's will for you to be sick, you better not try to get better. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes if we would just think, right? Amen. God wants you well. And if it doesn't happen the first time, maybe it'll happen the second time. If it doesn't happen the 20th time, it might happen the 21st time. The, Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. But if you study that out in the Greek, it actually means he that continues to ask shall receive. He that continues to knock, it shall be open. Amen. Sometimes you just have to keep on praying and keep the faith. Some of you are tossed like a, like a sea in the ocean with your faith. You'll come in here on Sunday morning and declare and decree healing over your body. And then you go home and call up somebody and say, God, I don't know how long I'm going to have to deal with this sickness and pain. You just canceled out your faith right there. Amen. And that's why James said in James 1 verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Yeah. You don't have to be unstable there. Also, this same principle applies to your finances. There's four ways to give in the scriptures. But a lot of folks, you get these mixed up. And that's why you never advance in your finances. This is why. We're going to go over them. I, I gave him a little slide here. Let's see if this works. Number one. Ever 
Everybody thank God for Kevin back there. Amen. Here we go. Maybe you can see that. The tithe. Number one. What is the tithe? That's the tenth. And, and I, I know the argument, well, the law is done away with. We, you know, that's under, well, tithing was actually a covenant before the law. Abraham tithed. Jacob tithed. A tenth of all of his spoil. Amen. So this is a covenant you enter in with God that when you gain increase, whether it be through income or, or whatever, whatever you get financially, a tenth of that goes to the Lord in a covenant. What's the motivation? Obedience. I want you to write these down if you can. What's the rate of exchange? An open heaven. Malachi 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so big you can't even receive it. Is that what he said? Do you believe what he said? Yes. So the motivation is obedience. You're obeying God. The rate of exchange is an open heaven. He'll bless you. Amen? All right, number two. First fruits. See, we always think that first fruits is the tithe. But when you study the Bible, they're totally separate. Now, Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10, I believe, says, Honor the Lord with the first fruits of all thine increase, and your barns shall be full. Amen. Amen. First fruits. So, what's the motivation? Generosity. What's the rate of exchange? Your barns shall be full. But we get those mixed up. You know, we tithe and we call that the first fruits. Your tithe is separate from the first fruits. Let me give you an example of what first fruits is. All right? So if you work a 40 hour week, that first hour, give it to God on Monday morning. If you make $20 an hour, that first 20 goes to God. That's the first fruits. When you build your faith a little bit and your finances start to increase, because they will, amen, start tithing your first week's pay of the month. You say, well, I can't do that. That's the problem. Then when you get there, and I know men that have done it, tithe your first month of the year in January. Give that as a first fruits offering unto the Lord. Amen. That's the principle of first fruits. Just start with your first hour of the week. Watch what happens. Do it in faith and believe God. That's your first fruits. All right? All right. What's the next one? Number three. Alms. Shout alms. Alms is giving to somebody less fortunate. Giving to the poor. When I pull up to a homeless man on the street and I pull out a 20 and hand it to him, that's alms giving. That's not my tithe and it's not a part of my tithe. I don't pull it out of my tithe. You see, we like to do a little math trick. I know people say, well, I'm going to take my tithe and give it to my sister to pay her rent. No. This is, where you, this is where you blow it. I'm just trying to help you, all right? Because I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And I can help you. Amen? All right. So, but if you get these in order, and, and you do them correctly, and you don't mix them up, your finances, I'm telling you, you will prosper. Amen? And when you're not stressed about your money, you're going to be, you're going to have peace on the inside. Amen? And that's going to breed outside. Praise God. All right. Your motivation is compassion. You feel sorry for that guy. You feel sorry for that individual. So you give them a little bit of money. What's the exchange on that? You receive what you give. But the problem with that is you're still at zero. That's almsgiving. All right? Now here's where we mess up too. We take, okay, let's, let's go to the next one. Number four, this is the last one. This is where the big bucks are. You ready? All right. The seed. Shout seed. seed. What's the motivation? Faith and reward. What's the rate of exchange? Mark chapter 4 says 30, 60, 100 fold. You follow what I'm saying? Now, here's where, here's where we mix these up, and I want to help you. All right? A lot of times, you take your seed and you eat it. You go to uh, a movie, and I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody, you know, you go to a movie and you pay tithe dollars to see it to damn the God you serve. Or you take, you take a little bit of money that he lays upon your heart to give and pushes you to give and you talk yourself out of it like, well, maybe that's just me. And then you eat your seed. You eat your seed. 
Now, the motivation is faith and reward. This is where you exhibit faith in your giving financially. The tithe is the covenant. The tithe is the covenant. The, what's the second one? First fruits. That's the first of what you receive, all right? Whether it be an hour, whether it be a week, a month, uh, whatever, a year, the first, all right? In fact, our general overseer of the Church of God, here's a, here's a very good example of this. He became, before he was general overseer, he was the world missions director. It's a four-year term. Well, the world missions department needed a lot of money. So he said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give the first fruits. He gave his first year of a four-year term to God as a first fruits. And they took up an offering at the General Assembly over half a million dollars. Amen. That's how he works. And he'll do that in your life. Amen. But you have to do it by faith. Amen. And this is where the seed comes in. Now, now here's where we get them, get them uh, mixed up and swapped. And this is where you get in trouble. Uh, kind of like the example I gave you of taking your tithe and giving it to somebody or, or paying a bill and saying, I'm just going to use my tithe for this. The tithe goes to the storehouse, Amen. the house of God, where you are fed, where you are built up spiritually. That's where the tithe goes. I don't care if you like your pastor or not. That's where the tithe goes. Amen. Amen. You don't tithe and say, where's the money going? Do you go to Starbucks and ask them where they put their money after you pay for that latte? Huh? You call them up and say, what are y'all doing with that? I don't like the, the paint out here on the sign. No, you're giving it to God. Amen. And he, honor any, he honors any act of faith. All right? So, so the tithe goes to the storehouse. The first fruits goes wherever you want it to go. All right? goes wherever you want it to go. The alms goes to whoever you want it to go to. But here's our thinking. We think in the flesh. So what we do is we think that we should sow a seed, shout seed. We should give a seed to somebody who is less fortunate. So, so we rationalize in our mind, well, I'm not going to give any money to Silas. This guy's driving an Alfa Romeo. He's the first one I'm giving my seed to. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because it's good soil. Yes. Somebody that's not bearing fruit, you give them your alms, not your seed. But you rationalize it, you see. You say, well, so-and-so is okay. I'm not going to sow into them. That's who you need to sow into. Because that's the good ground that bears fruit. You follow what I'm saying to you? That's why Jesus in Mark 4, when he taught on the parable of the sower, he said, he that sows, sows the word, because the seed is the word. Amen. So when you live the word, you're sowing the word. Write that down. When you live the word, you're sowing the word. Whether you're speaking about yourself, whether you say something to somebody, whether you do something, an action, that's a seed. To live the word is to sow the word. When you go to the doctor and you get a bad report and they say it's incurable and you say, well, that may be so in the natural, but I believe a higher truth that by his stripes I am made whole. You're sowing a seed right there. But if you look at him and you get all worried and you get the shakes and, and you begin to allow the enemy to play with your mind and your soul, that's a seed. Amen. Let the seed of his word thrive in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so remember that. The rate of exchange is 30, 60, 100 fold. Don't get these ways of giving confused. Okay? If you can straighten this out, you will prosper financially. But it has to be by what? Faith. And Psalm 112 says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, just the fact that you have a seed is evidence that you have a harvest. You don't get that, do you? The fact that you have a seed is evidence that you have a harvest. Amen. Get it out of your mind that, you know, and listen, I know some ain't going to like this because I'm talking about money. Well, you know what? We all like it. If you didn't, you wouldn't work for it. <laughs> Ecclesiastes actually says money answereth all things. Do you know that? That's what it says. 
That's what the richest man that's ever walked this blue marble planet said. He said, it answers all things. He says, but at the end of the day, fear the Lord and keep his commandments. Hallelujah. That you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen. So, so understand the rates of exchange. Understand. Amen. All right, who can tell me all four of those ways of giving with the motivation and the rate of exchange? Right now, without looking at your notes. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. Go ahead. All right, tell me the motivation for number one. Huh? Obedience. Tell me the motivation for number two. All, or first fruits. Generosity. Tell me the motivation for alms. Compassion. Tell me the obedience for a seed, or the motivation for a seed. Faith and reward. All right? You get what I'm saying to you, right? So when you give an alms to somebody, don't expect to receive a hundredfold, because that's not a seed. But you get discouraged when you don't. So, but if you understand the ways of giving, this will help you. This will help you, folks. So, and once again, when you sow seed, faith and reward, all right? When you sow seed, you're doing it in faith, expecting, shout expecting, to receive a harvest so that you can do it all over again. Amen? I committed to $1,000 to for the HVAC system, right? Well, some money come into my life. And you know I already have half of it given out before I even received it. I'm serious. Amen. I already have it gone by faith because I know he's going to increase it. Amen. He'll do it. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. But you have to let go. You have to let go by faith. Don't allow your circumstances to rob you of prosperity. Body, soul, or spirit. Don't let your circumstances of being emotionally depressed or oppressed or, or discouraged, don't allow that, amen, to trump the truth of God's word in your life. Stand in the mirror, square your shoulders, smile at yourself, and talk yourself out of it and say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am blessed upon this people planet because I serve him. Don't allow your circumstances to rule you. Amen. The storm rages, but the faith walk continues. Amen? Yes. Trial all around you, but the faith walk continues. Because you know at the end of the day, you win, but you can't cancel it out with what you say. Right. It's so important that I teach you this. Because the power of life and death is in your tongue. And if all you're doing is... You ever been around somebody that's just complaining all the time and negative? Yeah. Dear God. Yeah. Huh? They can take any positive situation and make it negative. Anything. Yeah. Right? They win a million dollars on a scratch-off. You mean I got to drive all the way to Raleigh to get it? <laughs> Take anything and make it negative. Don't be that person. And you know if you are or not, but don't be that individual. Amen. Be positive. Be thankful that God is God, and he is who he says he is. Yes, your circumstances are bad. Yes, you're going through a trial. Yes, it doesn't seem like things are going to work out. But the Bible says he works out all things for the good of them that love God, who are the call according to his purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. And he'll work it out for you too. Amen. So, when it comes to your, to your financial stewardship, your giving, folks, please. And the reason I'm teaching you this is because this church has plateaued in its giving which means there's no sacrificial giving. And people come to me with money problems. Okay? So I want to help you get past that as a pastor. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to pastor you. All right? And if I didn't talk about money, I'd be doing you a disservice. Okay? Because if you show me where your money is, I'll show you where your faith is. I'll show you. If you quit tithing because a financial hardship comes along, I'll show you where your faith is. If you quit giving, sowing seed because of a financial hardship, if they cut your hours at work and you stop doing the first fruits, I'll show you where your faith is. Because the test will come. That, that water heater will break. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That plumbing will go haywire. That, you know, you will wreck that car. Amen. Your heat pump will go out. 
You sow a big financial seed, heat pump goes out. Amen? But here's how you cancel out your faith. I can't believe I gave that money when I could have... No, don't do that. Don't fall into that trap. Square your shoulders once again and believe God to supply every need that you have. My God in heaven. Amen. You know what? He said he would supply every need that we have. So why are you asking him to do it? Huh? Why are you asking him to do it? He told you that he would do it. Amen. Every need that you have. Praise God. Go to Matthew 7. Kevin, I want to read a, verse, a few verses from there. Praise God. You rubbed off on me. I feel good. Amen. Maybe we need to take up another offer. Amen. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Get in a habit of giving. Try to give every day. I don't know. And, and you know, here's another principle. When you're, when you're sowing seed, okay, always, always sow and give to somebody or something that has given to you. Never dishonor anybody or anything. Excuse me, when I say thing, I'm talking about radio ministries, TV evangelists, whatever. Pastors, preachers, anybody that sows into your life, give something back to them. Don't ever just take from them. Give something back. If that's good soil and they're blessing you and they're helping you, sow into them. Sow into that ministry. Amen. Always follow that principle. Never take without giving. Never. Never take without giving. Praise God. All right. Matthew 7. Let's look at verse 7. Let's go there. Almost. Ask and it shall be given you. I quoted that earlier. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. In the Greek, that's he that keeps asking, he that keeps seeking, he that keeps knocking, it shall be opened. Verse 8. And there it is. Verse 9. What man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Can I confess something to you? I'm a sucker with my children. I'm glad my wife isn't in here. But I am. I have a problem telling them no when they ask for something. Now, I want to be the, the right parent and say no and, you know, do this and that, but I have a hard time with it. I really do. I have a hard time saying no. All right? And this, it, listen, let me tell you this. Write this down. You ready? You are God's children, not God's adults. What man is there of you? Whom if he, his son asks for bread, will give him a stone. Verse 10. Or if he asks for fish, will he give him a serpent? Verse 11. I like this. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, how much more will the Father which is in heaven, say how much more, will the Father which is in heaven give good gifts unto them who ask him? Hallelujah. Amen. He's not talking about your need here. He's talking about what you want. He said he would already supply your need. Amen. What do you want? Are there things you want? Are there things you desire? Sow a seed. Amen. Do you want, do you want a, a, a son or a daughter or a family member to come to Jesus Christ? Do you want them to be free? Sow a seed on their behalf. And do it until they do. Amen. Because he promised if you did, you would reap a harvest. Name that seed. Tell the Lord what you want for it. Amen. If you want a financial blessing, say, I need a financial increase. He knows what you need before you pray anyway. Amen. If somebody needs to be born again, put it on the envelope when you give it in church. Say, this is for my baby to be born again and set free. Amen. What do you want? That's what he's saying here. How much more will he give good gifts to them that ask him? Prosperity is relative, folks. Prosperity to somebody may be driving a brand new Mercedes Benz. Prosperity to me is driving a 1987 Ford F-150. I love it. Me too. I just bought one. Didn't I, Alan? Let me tell you what he's doing. I told Alan, I said, brother, I need a pickup truck. I said, I want you to find me one. He says, I'll start today. Well, we met here at the church, and we was jaw jacking, 
And, and there was a lady here who was painting the kitchen down there for free. She was painting down there, giving her time, giving her service to the Lord. Amen. And she overheard our conversation and said, I've got a pickup truck. I said, how many miles on it? 90,000. I said, what year? 87. 90,000? Bring that thing over here. She went and got it. I drove that bad boy, didn't we? We liked it. And, and the name of the truck was Caroline. Carolina Blue, baby. <laughs> Amen. I thought I'd plug that in there. It's a true story. It's Carolina Blue. The name of the truck's Caroline. I said, I'm not changing the name. Praise God. Immaculate on the inside. Four speed. Beautiful truck. 90,000 miles. I'm a Chevy guy, but I like this Ford. I liked it. And I bought it. Amen. Amen. Because I know I would have it to pay for it. <laughs> Praise God. And he blessed me. Because I said, I, when I pray, that's how I talk to the Lord. I said, Lord, I want a truck, you know, just in casual conversation. Yeah. I really did say that. Yeah. And then I talked to him. He called me. He just bought one. He called me. I said, I want one. <laughs> I was praying the Lord laid on his heart to give me his. Amen. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm teasing. But if he's tugging on you, brother, that's all right. Amen. No, I'm kidding. Alice said, no. Praise God. But, uh, but no. I don't even know where I was going with all that. What was I talking about? All right. Hey, hey, if you want something, that's, that's okay, prosperity is relative. That's me prospering. Amen. I like BMWs. I like, I like nice cars. But honestly, I'm, I'm just as good with riding around in that pickup. Amen. I really am. Uh, so, uh, that, you know, when you go to Africa, the guy who just got a new 10-speed to drive to his ministry school, he's prospering. Amen. Yeah. I got a pastor friend in Africa, James Amoko. Yep. And he told me, he said, these guys get bicycles, it's like they get a Mercedes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Prosperity is relative. Yeah. Amen. It doesn't have to be the biggest and the finest. What do you want? What do you desire? Yes. Amen. And if you've got all you'll ever want, give it away. Give it away. Amen. Just give it away. Praise God. If somebody needs to use something of yours, let them use it. Amen. And say, you use it as long as you need to use it. Amen. That's what Jesus said. If it's, your, if it's in your ability to do that, in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, if you can give somebody something to use, give it to them. And give them your cloak also. Give them your coat and your cloak. Amen. Your jacket and your underwear. Give it to them if they need it. Amen. Praise God. I love this. Is there another verse? What's the next one say? Yeah, here we go. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would have that men should do to you, do you even so to them. Now, So, I want you to think about this in terms of prosperity. Because in the context of asking the Father to give you whatever you desire, He's more than willing to do so, if you're in covenant with Him, right? Therefore, all things whatsoever you do unto men, that men should do to you, even so do to them. That means, listen, uh, a lot of times when it comes to not only finances, but emotional, spiritual restoration, Amen. My wife tells me I'm too nice. I mean, I give, I'll give somebody 100 chances. They'll take advantage of me 50 times. I'll give them a 51st chance. Right? That's because I think about this principle. What if it were me? What would I want them to do to me? How would I want them to treat me? Amen. How would I want them to treat me? Now, when it comes to terms of financial, all right, the Bible says, give, I taught you this last week, give, and it shall be given. He didn't say pray and it shall be given. He said, give, and it shall be given. Luke 6, 38. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. Shall men give into your bosom? Not God, men. When we were trying to get a building and all that, and you know, people were saying, ask God for the money. I said, well, Moses... God told him to ask the people. Amen. We're asking God, and he's saying, here, give it. 
Amen? Give to the Lord. That's why he laded them with the wealth of Egypt when they left Egypt, so that they could give to the building of the tabernacle. Because when you give towards something, there's a sense of responsibility there. Amen. If you just come into this church week after week and you never give anything, you'll stay where you're at. You'll stay where you're at. And if you just give the same all the time, you'll stay where you're at. That, that's, that's another good point. If you are only tithing and there's no first fruits, there's no almsgiving, there's no seed, you'll stay where you're at. You'll plateau. You will stay where you are at. Listen to me today. Amen. And I know the flesh man wants to say, well, I got to pay my rent. I can't do that. I got to pay this bill. I got to do. Listen, faith and flesh don't abide together. Amen. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The next few weeks, I'm going to be talking about faith. I hope you're ready. Amen. Because everything you receive from God, everything He does through you, when we go evangelize this community and we win multitudes to Jesus, well, one person said amen. <laughs> when, we, when we evangelize this community and we win multitudes to Jesus Christ, amen. and we sow the seed of His Word, amen. we shall reap a harvest. Yes, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go to, back to Psalm 112. i got a couple minutes here. Psalm 112. And let's look at verse, uh, where have we left off? Three or four. I love this chapter. I want you to study it. I want you to read it. I want you to meditate on it this week. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. So in other words, he's saying, unto those who fear the Lord, wealth and riches shall be in his house. He is righteous because of your faith in the cross. Light arises in darkness. He didn't say there wouldn't be darkness. Anybody that tells you you'll never have any trials, you'll never have any struggles, you'll never have any hardship, don't listen to it. You will. It's coming, especially if you're in the faith. Amen? And a lot of times it comes by people, right? But he's saying even in darkness, light will arise in your life. When you go through a hardship, if there's a sickness in your body, if, if you're, you're struggling mentally and emotionally, if you're struggling, struggling financially, he's saying that light will rise in your life. In other words, it may be a dark season, but it's not going to stay dark. Right. Amen. It may be a tough period, but it, it's not going to last. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. Amen. Write that down. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. Amen. Amen. Times you just got to square your shoulder. Amen. Square your back like a T-rail. And just declare the word of God over your life. Amen. 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 Remind yourself who you are in God. You have the DNA of God abiding on the inside of you. Verse 5. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Amen. Use wisdom. Use discretion. Use direction in your life. Verse 6. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be an everlasting remembrance. Verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil things, evil tidings. His heart, shout my heart, my heart. is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Amen. There's your faith right there. Amen. Your focus is fixed. Your heart is fixed because you trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yes. Amen. You're tired of always having the same struggle, the same, just the same thing all the time. Well, the good news is you don't have to. Amen. Fix your heart today. It all begins at the cross. It all begins confessing your sin and saying, Lord, I accept you as Savior and Lord. That's where it all begins. And then next you engage your faith and prosper body, soul, and Spirit. Next verse, verse 8. His heart is established and he shall not be afraid until he sees his desires upon his enemies. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every eye closed.
All right, now look back at me. 1 Timothy 6, 17. <laughs> I saw something I want to share. It says this. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty nor to trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. That's 1 Timothy 6, 16. Go ahead and bring that up. I want you to see it. I, I want to, uh, give me about three minutes here. There was a minister that came on television in the past year, and he was asking for a lot of money for a plane. And when I saw that, I began to say, eh, a little excessive. And then I went back and watched it, and he didn't ask for it. He just asked you to believe with him. But the church world got all in a fit. And said, I can't believe he would do that. Why not? Why not? You know, I talked to a man that knows him personally and said that he gave $3 million to Hurricane Katrina victims. Well, they don't publish that. And that he's already given two planes away. They don't publish that. Gave them away. Didn't trade them in. Didn't sell them. He gave them away. And this is somebody who knows him personally. And the Lord convicted me because I began to but you know what? The Lord spoke to my heart. Anytime somebody tells you that you can't do something, what they're really telling you is, is that they can't believe for it themselves. Because when, when I was going to purchase this building, oh, if I were to listen to people, oh, that building will never be up to par. You'll never get in that thing. You'll never get a loan for that. Amen. That's what was said. But what they were really telling me was, they can't really believe for it. But I refused. And I said, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe God. And God made a way. God opened a door. But you have to live by faith. When we were at, when we were at the Mountain View property, and, and we were in the tent, and it got destroyed, discouragement set in, you know, uh, a lot of folks got discouraged and they left the church because they felt like God wasn't in it because if he was, we would have gotten that building. Well, get this. God blessed us with this facility. We got this very cheap. Realtor called me. He's already called me after he saw pictures of our renovations. He's ready to make some money. And he said, I can get $350,000 for that building now. Do you know I could sell this place tomorrow and have more than enough money to build what we want to build over there? And we still have the property. So don't tell me God wasn't in it. But you have to live by faith. Amen. When he puts a vision in your heart, he puts faith on the inside of you. you got to stand strong because I'm telling you, naysayers will come along. Bank told us we needed $100,000 to put down to get half a million. We would have that plus some. We can do it tomorrow if we wanted to. Amen. But we're going to evangelize this neighborhood first. Amen. God knows what he's doing. He knows who needs to be saved in this area. Amen. He knows who needs a good Pentecostal revival. And what better place to do it than the place you were saved in 30 years ago. Yes. Sitting on these pews. Yes. He's a big God. Yes. And he knows what he's doing. Yes. He knows what he's doing. But ladies and gentlemen, what I'm telling you, what I'm trying to prove to you is that he is faithful. All right? 17, brother. Verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. What I'm telling you is, you can believe God for anything, whether it's a plane or more money or a better job or whatever. Salvation for your children, family, you can believe him for anything 
you want to believe Him for. Don't let any religion and don't let any man hinder you from believing God for what your heart desires. Don't let them do it. Amen. I'm telling you, there's nothing impossible with God. And you know what? The reality is you should always be growing in your faith. You should never stay stagnant. Spiritual revelation should never be at a standstill. You should always be exercising and exhibiting your faith. When you believe God for one thing, it's time to believe Him for something else. Because it will come to pass. Amen. Believe Him for it. Amen. If you need a better job, believe Him for it. Amen. Praise God. Man, I wish I could get you to feel what I feel. I do. Amen. If, if you need a better job, believe God for it. If you, I don't want to hear this, I'm on a fixed income. You could have the next million dollar idea. See how the devil locks you into this kind of thinking? Well, I'm on a fixed income. Hey, give. Give it all away. Watch what he does. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, he's no respecter of persons. Next verse, 18. That they do good. That they be rich in what? Good works. Ready to distribute. Amen. I know some wealthy people in this church. I'm going to tell you something. They're the most giving. Amen. Amen. The most giving. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Verse 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. That's what it's all about. It's okay to have money. Just don't let money have you. Amen. You have it. You control it. Don't let it control you. Right. Amen. Don't let it control you. Did you receive it today? Yes. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise team, if you would come. Let's sing that come to the altar. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to speak to the camera for just a moment. Can they hear me good in there, Casey? Is it okay? Does it sound okay? If you're watching by internet, listening by podcast, right here today, prosperity begins at the cross simply by accepting Christ by faith. Just pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I confess my sins with my mouth. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And with my mouth, I confess you as Savior of my life. And just believe God to save you. If you prayed it by faith, I believe he did. It starts right there. And then prosperity, body, soul, and spirit can be in your life as well. Wealth and riches can be in your house. God bless you. Thank you for listening.